out the bank, do some more, and that's the end of the thing, so do it for do some more, we are do it for do some more, when it comes to happy the Saturday this is my night, favorite show. Right. Yep. and the Sacramento do Kings some get it done, do some more. they grinded it out against the red hot Orlando Magic, how are we doing on a Saturday, what up dudes? Hey Morgan. Hi, what are you what are you pointing at? Oh, Imaginary crowd around me of millions Marginary. upon millions Let's go, Kane. of Kings fans around the world that are amped tonight. Mm-hmm. Maybe some Dude. skip the game. I had people comment saying I'm done for a while. Yeah. Well, if you're done, then you missed out tonight. You missed out on some dogs unleashed in Orlando that were looking for a fight. Sabonis had a scowl before the game. Look like I'm ready to go. I'm worked up. And the rest of the team brought it. De'Aaron Fox. Dog. Keon Ellis. <laughs> Keegan Murray. Sabonis. The list goes on. A team victory for the Sacramento Kings on a night where Malik Monk could not Make a basket at all. Going 0 for 11. The Kings find a way because their zone defense worked. Because they played physical. They matched the physicality and beat a big Orlando team tonight. Big time win for the Sacramento Kings. And oh, I feel so much better on a Saturday night because of this win. And the fact that we were on the call earlier tonight at the Stockton Kings. Santa Cruz Warriors and the Stockton Kings. In front of a jam-packed house, clinched the playoff spot for the second consecutive year behind Mason Jones with a triple-double. What a night to be in Sacramento, Morgan Reagan. What a night. What a night. Uh, Especially when you're, like, jam-packing a whole bunch of kings. It's just so nice when it goes in this direction. So nice. Hey. Saturday night. Cheers, man. Saturday night. Cheers. I'm going to say this right now. Yeah, no, please. You're going to say everything. Say this right now. Yeah. Keep playing defense like this, Kings. Keep oh, playing I'm with so this physicality and mentality, and you're going to win games. You had a hiccup against Washington. 
Oh, there are good. moments oh. of there are some moments of good defense in that game, but then stretches of like, what are you, what, what are you doing? Way then? more of the stretch. And so all these people say the Kings can't stop length. They can't stop uh, athleticism. I go, no, they can do better than <sighs> letting Kyle Kuzma torture them like he was Lex Luger in the torture rack. Shout out WCW okay. fans that would only know that. I was like Lex. That sounds like a villain. Well, you're thinking of Lex Luthor, but Lex Luger, uh, WCW. Is, did they have anything in common? I'm sure, you know, I'm yeah, I'm okay. sure that's why the name came about. <laughs> Man, you know uh, what? I even put this back. You know, maybe I set the intentions today. Yep, this, you is, know? this went, I no, feel no, like hear me you out. were out there playing, Deuce. All you. what I say after last game? Oh, well, then this is why they won. Deuce Macy needed to go in there and slap somebody around. You know, Keegan Murray play with a little aggressiveness. Did you go like slap him? He listened to the podcast and felt the slap that I pretended to give the him. The metaphoric slap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but the real intention was this. We did a King's Magic preview, and I had the beam lit behind me. I'm like, I'm leaving that on. I'm leaving that on. Oh, and I'm not okay. Tired. Okay. I am so glad you're admitting this. This, my friend, is what jinxes no. are all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, laugh it up. <laughs> laugh it up. This is the shit I do. So don't act like I'm crazy. You're batshit crazy. You left the beam lit. You you left the beam lit since all the way today, this In, morning. Intentions. Intentions. I'm putting out some positive vibes. So into the jinxes universe. are the same. They're, they're intentions. No. It's energy. No. It's. <laughs> No, Jinx is like a defensive thing that you make up that thinks you think impact things. I'm just saying I put positive vibes out. You just feel like that impacted something. I'm just saying I put positive vibes out. I wasn't done either. I wasn't done either with my positive oh, vibes. Oh, please proceed. I no. don't remember now because mm. <laughs> you had to cut me off cut to get you in off. your Jinx thing. It's unrelated. There's a difference between intentions and jinxing. They're anyway. just different words. Manifesting. Okay. You guys. Oh, really? So is your your vision boards jinxing it? Was it jinxing the Kings last year by saying that they're going 41 games? Remember, no, it was remember how scared I was, though, to put 41 so on stupid. there? It's a vision board. It's what you're trying to put out there, you nerd. Vision board. Let's also different. acknowledge Morgan taking away from my moments. Again. Okay. Hey, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. That would really help as we continue to grow this thing. Manifesting more and more growth. Within this podcast. Also, let's acknowledge this, man. Back to back winning seasons for the Kings. Hey. 41 wins tonight for the Sacramento Kings. <sighs> Mike Brown joins Rick Adelman as the only coaches to ever do that in the Kings' 39 year history. We have now reached the point that in 10 of the 39 seasons, Come the Kings on. have had a winning season. Okay. This is the 10th season in 39 years. Uh, hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. It I, doesn't sound pretty, but I mean, you can only go up, right? <laughs> also in the chat, I'm seeing multiple people references. I put a poll question. Who is the player of the night? I put Keon Ellis had 16 points. Uh, he did not. He had 19 points. Ooh, I shouldn't take shit. away. You get the point. You look at the lower third on the screen too. Deuce Mason put 19 points. Let's acknowledge that. Oh, I love Um, Just people. a really impressive win by the Kings, Morgan. Super impressive. Um, let's, let's talk about it because I feel like this is one of those wins. For example, I felt like with the loss against the Wizards, it was a lot of big picture. It wasn't just about moments and certain plays, possessions, where this one, there was multiple possessions that I'm excited for us to mm -hmm. actually break down and go over because... Um, they really led to a, 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 a really big, fun win for the Kings. I remember what I was going to say. Okay. So not only the beam, but I also, I was putting some sound effects back into this podcast machine. Mm -hmm. And one of them I added was this. Give me a hell yeah. Where has that been? Exactly. Vibes. Vibes matter. I put that in this morning. That's a vibe. Like, that's a vibe, that's a vibe that should, why would it take you that long? I don't know. I don't know. That it's hurts. Back. I'm glad it's back. It is back. It's back. I uh, appreciate you guys being here. A shout out to David. Bad news, sour grape hacks, baby cakes. What's up, Jess? What's up? Brooke is in the building with Jake and Joe and Jim. Emiliano is here with Patrick and Jake. 
Hey, Bashal, I hopefully I'm saying that right. Chief C.J. Hardaway. Patrick, I already named you. What's up, Drizzy Drake? Dude, what is up? Hello, everybody in the chat. We appreciate you guys being here tonight. What were you laughing at? I'm just laughing at, I'm going to start using the word intentions. Intent. I love it. No, I love it. It's positive. I love it. I just don't understand. You There's don't, nothing to understand. You don't know the difference between intentions and jinxes? I understand the difference. I think there could be some blurred lines with how people use certain things as a jinx or an intention. What's up, Sean? What's up, Pike? Dude says, much love from Canada. Shout out, Canada. Oh, Canada. Great anthem. Yeah, fantastic yeah. anthem. I think my favorite. <laughs> Is that offensive? <laughs> I just You're like it. So many patriots are going to just shit on you now. <laughs> my bad. Uh, uh, all right. Do some more. We're coming down in three, two, one. Hit my music. Deuce and mo. Deuce and mo. Deuce and mo. They tell you what they know. Deuce and mo. Deuce and mo. Deuce and mo. The podcast that you know. Welcome into the Deuce and Mo podcast, recording this on a Saturday night. The Kings lost to the Wizards the other night, and oh, did we feel so, so low. How are they going to respond in the final game of a three-game road trip, taking on an Orlando team that was red hot? They had won five in a row, 10 of 11, one of the best defensive teams in the league, third in offensive rating, third in points allowed per game. And Carroll playing out of his mind, developing into a superstar before our eyes. Were the Kings going to roll over and fold, or were they going to show up? Well, they did show up in a big way and down the stretch, able to get back in the game and play big in the fourth quarter, securing a road win in Orlando, a place where the Magic were 25-9 and nine headed into this game. The Kings beat the Magic 109-107 to 107 to get win number 41 of the season. It's big because that means back-to-back -back winning seasons for the Sacramento Kings, something they have not done since the Rick Adelman days. In fact, it's only their 10th winning season in 39 years. So much to go over. The highs, the lows, and a lot of fun in this one. This podcast is always presented by our friends who are at Northwest Exteriors. Check out TrustNorthwest.com. I'm Deuce Mason. That's Morgan Reagan. How you doing, Mo? So, so good. But you know what's funny? Hmm. So, it's just like so clear in here. It's a good point. Typically, I do this on the pre-show and I forgot. But maybe this is a good ch chance for the audio people to hear it during an actual podcast. You think so? I get the fog machine out because this is a win you celebrate. Give me the fog! Oh, the Sacramento Kings! It was like a Disney movie in Orlando at the Magic Kingdom. Keon Ellis in front of his family. Play like a dog. De'Aaron Fox, big shot. King <laughs> into his back making threes. The bonus ties Kevin Love, 53 consecutive double levels, and the Kings get the victory tonight. Oh, it was so, so sweet. <laughs> I, I love this because all I see is Deuce stomping, trying to get the fog to go more and more, and it wasn't going, but you continued. You worked through, and you're exactly right. It was so sweet. I don't even give a shit about the fog. It was so, everything was so good tonight. And when I say everything was so good, it's not like Orlando played bad. And Deuce mentioned all the things that Orlando has been doing coming into this game, and they look just like that team. But they were a team that were missing some big shots, and especially there at the end, and the Kings were getting some big stops uh, throughout this one. And, yeah, there's just a lot of good to this one. A lot of dogs out there tonight. So we were in Stockton tonight. For an NBA G League game calling Stockton Kings and Santa Cruz Warriors. Shout out Stockton Kings real fast. They clinched a playoff spot tonight. Lindsey Harding, her first season as head coach. Mason J Jones with the triple-double. That game tipped off at five, okay? Kings tipped off in Orlando at four. So we got to watch a lot of the game before our game started. And I did the thing that's always dangerous when you're broadcasting. I had the Sacramento game on my laptop. Yeah, dude. 
It, it is dangerous because all it did was distract me. Deuce can multitask and Deuce is like calling the game while watching the Kings game. I'm trying to watch the Kings game while trying to focus on the Stockton Kings game. And for me, it's just not as easy. Yeah. You were loose as loose. I was feeling good. Yeah, and I was feeling were. much better after I jumped out of my seat late fourth quarter after the Kings secured the win in Orlando, literally jumped out of my chair after Bancaro missed the shot at the buzzer. Anyway, then we drove back to Sacramento and then caught up on the rest of the game and my goodness. Uh, here's why I had a good feeling about the Kings competing tonight. Not necessarily winning, about competing. I see Sabonis walk on the court tonight. This. And four four o'clock. This is I He had a scowl on his face. He had that look on his face like, let's effing go. You looked at me and I said, Is that a demon inside of that's him? what i'm didn't he what? have that yes he had that look dark deep shit was going on in that body i have no idea what it was but it channeled through this game i said this morgan what did on you a pregame i wanted the angry kings tonight yeah and someone clapped back and said i want the good kings no no here's the thing the angry kings means a king's team that's going to play physical that's going to play aggressive. Not going to get punked. That's going to compete. And tonight, I was really eager to see. I was nervous about this game going into it because mm -hmm. of all the things we mentioned. Orlando is playing some awesome basketball. They play great defense. They're physical. They've got length. We saw it on display. Jalen Suggs playing amazing defense, as best as he can. Bancaro is just a big-ass dude who can get buckets. Jonathan there Isaac... Change this game tonight for the Orlando Magic and for the Kings to find a way to get the win. And it was because they tried different things defensively. They were locked in. The communication was great. They were able to battle through Malik Monk having an 0 for 11 night. Yeah. There was so much to go over with this game, but I, I just love the compete from Sacramento. I agree. I agree. I almost think, should we start at the end or should we start at the beginning of this one? You know, let, let's just start with the beginning okay. because I, I felt like Orlando was really controlling the pace in the first few minutes, but then Sacramento started to get stops. And I just liked, uh, you, you could tell early that the Kings were going to be in this game, Morgan. What stood out to you about just what they were doing defensively in this game? Well, first, you, you talk about how Orlando was like controlling the pace and the pace Orlando wants to play is put them in a half court offense. Right. But you're exactly right. Once the Kings really picked it up defensively, just turned it on. were super engaged, rotating all over the place. They were able to push the pace. They were able to get those deflections. They were able to get the stops that they needed to do to push the ball up the floor. But I think, um, I think it happened later on, or I don't even know when exactly that zone started the three, two zone. But whenever that started for the Sacramento Kings, I really saw a shift. And you and I have talked about it so many times in the NBA, how there's not every team can't just play a zone in the NBA. Like it's hard to execute unless you have it down. And the Kings just seemed like they were on a string, whether they were even in a man or in that zone and just felt together. They were talking up yeah. key on, especially. In that first quarter, it felt like they were getting broken down a lot with players in the dunker spot. A lot of times what would happen, oh, the Kings God. are trying to defend the pick and roll. And then it would be hitting the guy on the short roll. And then there's a guy in the dunker spot wide open because of weak side help just came over to get the roll. Mm -hmm. And Isaac got some easy looks. You know, I think Wagner got a couple of easy looks. And you're like, dude, they're getting shredded on the same play. Like, you got to lock in. But you're right. I think once they decided to junk up the game, they ran zone defense, according to Mike Brown, after the game 20-plus times. And Orlando scored on seven of those possessions. See? It just junked it up enough. And it only works, like you said, if you're able to communicate. And I thought that starting lineup was rotating perfectly. You, you can play a zone on Orlando because you don't trust that they're going to kill you from the perimeter. They're not going to kill. They're not a great three point shooting team. So you really want to make sure their length isn't killing you. You think about all the size that they have with Wagner, both Wagner's right. Yeah. Then you got Bancaro, who's not only tall, but the guy's strong. He made Harrison Barnes look like a child at times tonight. 
And it wasn't because Harrison Barnes wasn't trying. It's because Ben Carroll is a grown ass man ass that looks like he was built in the damn lab. I just thought the communication was perfect. I saw everybody talking from Keon Ellis yep. to Keegan Murray, Fox. The pressure was great. The contests, for the most part, were great. I was really impressed. And so now all of a sudden you're talking about in the month of March, you don't want to ignore the Washington game, but for the most part, their defense has been pretty good. Absolutely. I mean, that's what you're looking at in this one. And I think even going into this one, you and I said, is this going to look a lot like the game against the Knicks, yep. the physicality, um, you know, the Knicks play tough. The Knicks have beat a lot of teams that are under 500 and when you look at them in the Eastern Conference and the teams that they've beaten, you go, okay, it's not that they're frauds because they can find ways to get these Ws. And I think with Orlando especially, they have been on a tear as of late. They've been really figuring yeah. out things. Their energy has been together. They love winning on their home floor. And for the Kings to just be as locked in and as engaged as they were, but then also up their physicality and understand what needed to be done. I thought they did a good job of even things as contesting some very difficult shots for the Orlando Magic, right? And the Magic at times were just missing some shots, but I think that you do have to give a lot of love to the Kings' intensity and what they brought. Jonathan Isaac in the first quarter, we were talking about that first quarter. Isaac came off the bench, 10 points for him. I thought he was just impactful on mm. both ends. In fact, I thought Orlando played some of their best basketball tonight when Isaac was on the floor and yeah. he tied his career high. What a story he was. People forget he had that devastating injury that happened against the Kings in the bubble uh. back. I mean, God, that was four years ago now. Like so long ago. So long ago. And he's been trying to fight back, dealing with injuries. But you see the flashes of brilliance. You're watching him tonight. I'm like, is that Kevin Durant? I mean, it's dunking inside. It's blocking shots. Good defense. Stretching the threes, floor. Like yep. putting the ball on the floor. He had an instant impact on this game. But the one good thing from Sacramento tonight, I didn't feel like they were getting deflated. They were Orlando was throwing Great punches, point. and they were like, no, we're fighting in this one. And there are sometimes this season where the Kings are willing to throw some punches, but then they get hit back, and they're like, I don't like that. The Kings fought back tonight. And so they were able to withstand, like, all right, Jonathan Isaac's going to get his, but how many minutes is he going to play? Is he going to play a lot of minutes? We have to keep playing our game. And that meant pushing the pace as best as we can against this team. Yeah. And I thought that was one of the more impressive things that Sacramento did tonight is they got into their early offense. They were really disciplined to get some live ball turnovers, help them get into their offense, but even just pushing immediately, even off makes, was important for them. So many early actions, right? Like whether it was off a DHO, whether it was just pushing the ball up the floor with the pass, taking one dribble, creating something, it was fantastic to see and it wasn't and like you said it wasn't just fast break points even though they did finish the game with 26 fast break points compared, an amazing number yeah and compared to orlando's 10 fast break points right so like orlando continued to try to play their game kings were like no f that we're going to continue to play our game so you saw the way that they were pushing up the floor now you look at this number and this is pretty wild to me especially when you see a w deuce you see the 32 points in the paint they only had 34 points in the paint against the washington wizards as well it's not enough and especially for the way that we've seen the kings attack and finish and do so many creative things when they do get into the paint but they were making some of their outside shots Keon was a big part of that and they got Keegan. to the free throw line which was huge you know and you go to the free, free throw, throw line, line you shoot 21 free throws the kings missed three tonight yep that's 85.7 percent for a team who for the majority of the season has been last in the NBA at 73%. They have been trending in the right direct in the right direction uh, at the free throw line, which has been fantastic. And now in the month of March, by the way, is we're going to spend more time talking about the defense. Uh -huh. The offense in the month of March, the offensive rating for Sacramento is 12th. Let's okay. Go. It's not great for the That's offense. That's okay. It's, it's, get, it's getting better though. That's but, the thing. Well, it's actually dropped a little oh, bit. Oh, you're right. From March. Okay, okay. I'm but like, huh. The offense is 12th. The defense is fourth in the NBA. Great. In, in March. I'll um, take that. Since the All-Star break, I want to see what these updated numbers are. Since the All-Star break, the Kings' defense is 11th. Since the All-Star break, their defensive rating is 11th. Their offense is 9th. Okay. And their net rating is 7th. So, yes, the Wizards' loss was really, really bad. 
you can't erase what happened. You don't want to forget it, but you also want to acknowledge that they were able to bounce back tonight. And this, it doesn't make up for that loss, but... I'm shocked that their offense is so low considering how many wins that they've had in this... That's what I'm saying. Because they're finding ways yeah. to win because they're playing better defense. Yeah. I mean, and you say so low. I mean, we, they're, they're in the top 10 of offense and defense since the All-Star. For break. sure. For sure. And and I, I guess you look at a night like tonight, too, and I know, you know, you talk about the points in the paint, and then you look at the way that they attacked and got to the free throw line and actually making their free throws. Like, doing all the, of the little things is what help them get this win tonight and in regulation right this game didn't have to go to d double overtime feels like there's been some um interesting games against the orlando magic oh my because God. they do play so hard no every time they play i mean you think about orlando last year the double yep. overtime game we saw uh this year in sacramento and then tonight i did want to mention one more step uh with yeah. free throw percentage uh, in the month of march the kings are fifth in free throw percentage at 81 percent since the All-Star break, they're ninth in free throw percentage at 79%. So some of the things that they were really struggling with before the break, defense, pace, free throw shooting. They were last in free throw shooting. They, last. They're, that's yes. trending in the right direction. So yes. that, to me, is super encouraging for the Kings right now. Yeah, I'm with you. And I think in a, in a game like tonight, uh, it it showed, you know, like, it showed that they really did lay an egg in Washington. They didn't have to. They didn't beat the Orlando Magic with bad basketball. And Magic were just uh, unhealthy and were missing a whole bunch of shots. No, like it was a it was a competitive game between both teams. And like we mentioned from the top, if Orlando, I mean, still shot forty seven percent from the field, and it just felt like they were missing some of the bigger shots. And if those shots well, had fallen, it just would have been a whole different game in the fourth. Where did I want to go next? Oh, I know, third quarter. So at the half, it's a it's a two point lead for Orlando, fifty six forty four. Orlando gets off to a really strong start in the third quarter, and. I had visions of the bad starts that they've had recently in the third quarter, like that game in Washington. You're like, Vision you got back in the league, like back in the lead, and now you're letting go of the rope. Man, did the Kings respond. They end up going on a 15 to two push, uh, taking a 74 65 lead. A couple of big plays. Keegan Murray had a three to give him that nine point lead. And one of my favorite plays of the game that Mike Brown had a challenge because Fox has called for a foul was De'Aaron Fox's great help defense on Bancaro where he comes over. I don't even know. What do you call it? A he strip, rip, a block, rips. steal. He literally rip, jumps up and with one hand rips the ball from Bancaro. The officials called a foul on it. They reviewed it. It was overturned. Yeah. But that play showed me everything about the Kings fight tonight. The other thing that to me impressed me. What? That I this team a month ago probably doesn't handle it this way. This mm. team last year doesn't handle it this way. They didn't they didn't score a basket for over five minutes after taking that lead. And Orlando comes back and ties the game at 74-74. And that's when you usually see the Kings die. But they were still competing defensively. Mm -hmm. The offense was getting some good looks. There's a couple of contests in there, but they you were feeling good about the looks they were getting. They didn't let it deflate them. They kept competing. Even Malik Monk was, there, yeah. there was one take I didn't like of Malik Monk's, and it was a step back jumper, and it was him just trying to get something to go. But then you see uh, end of shot clock, he was trying to get something closer to the rim. Just couldn't get it to go. You know, it just wasn't his night. And I mean, he even tweeted out, uh, something about he couldn't throw, what was it? A rock I in the ocean? I couldn't throw a rock in the ocean tonight. Light the MF beam, though. Hey. I love to see it. And he knew it, and, you know, he wanted to get himself going, and even when he couldn't, he was like, okay, well, it's just not going to be my night. And I felt like in that stretch that you're talking about, you're exactly right. The Kings, you didn't see body language change. You didn't see guys just, like, give up the fight. They kept competing on the defensive end and didn't allow – the Orlando Magic to go on this huge run. And how many times during this season have you especially talked about these huge runs other yep. teams go on? It's like teams are going to go on a little bit of a run. You just can't let these balloon into avalanches. I always reference that 45-19 push Houston had, right? Barf. So many big leads. You're like, you, you got to stop these runs mm -hmm. far earlier. So the Kings, after it was tied at 74, they can't score. 
Sabonis hits a couple of free throws. Fox scores a tough one. That one... Which I can't one? remember if it, that was the play, but I'm going to mention it anyway. Suggs is putting tremendous on-ball pressure on Fox. Fox kind of bends down with a low dribble to wiggle his way past mm. Suggs, but who is meeting him? Jonathan Isaac on a contest. Yep. Fox puts up a high floater bucket. That was in the fourth and quarter. One. That, yeah, that was not the one I was thinking about. Oh. That was a different one. But, yeah, <laughs> I mean, he made so many great plays in that stretch. So, they end up taking a 78-74 lead. Magic make a couple of plays at the end of the third quarter. One that it was just a killer was Duarte's closeout on Suggs, who hits a three off the window and one. He missed the free throw. So, all of a sudden, it's 81-78 at toward the end of the third. Monk had a great push down the floor, uh -huh. kicks it to Fox, buries a three. We're tied going into the fourth at 81. No discipline on that closeout by Chris Duarte. And I was so disappointed in that because we have seen him play so under control yep. as of late. And it's been really nice to see that addition for the Sacramento Kings because you can trust him out there. And that being one of the worst closeouts of, I mean, obviously it was the worst closeout of this game. It was pretty rough, but it was good to get that response from Fox yep. to hit the three, and then you're tied at 81, headed into the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter, man, again, just a roller coaster ride of a quarter. I mean, this was back and forth. I loved, one, Fox staying aggressive, mm -hmm. how many big-time plays he had in that fourth quarter. He finished with 12 points in the fourth quarter. Uh, he was three of seven, one of four from three, five of five from the free throw line. I didn't love some of the threes he took, especially that last one toward the end of the game. Oh. That it, was short. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I didn't like it. I didn't like that. But he made his free throws. Five of five at the free throw line. The other guy that was awesome tonight, Keegan Murray. Keegan had nine points in the fourth quarter. He finished with 22 points, seven rebounds, six of seven from three. Dude. Where do you want to go? You were about to chime in with something. Well, because you said De'Aaron Fox five of five at the free throw line, eight of nine he finished with. Yeah, I said I was taught, I was going over his fourth quarter Thank numbers. You. Five okay. of five in the fourth Jesus, quarter. Jesus, that was just in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I mean him making the biggest free throws that he needed to make, especially in the fourth, those uh, two coming down the stretch. But like you mentioned, Keegan Murray just um, playing confident out there, and the fact that he picked up. His fifth, was that in the third? No, that was in the fourth that quarter, 7.20-ish to go in the okay. fourth quarter. He picks up his fifth. He looked Sack like he was going to come off the, uh, go to the bench. Jordy goes, no, stay out there. He played the rest of the way. Keegan Murray played 11 minutes and 58 seconds of the fourth quarter, only came out with two seconds to go when Bancaro had a chance to win it at the buzzer and missed a shot. Yeah, it was, I mean, just incredible that he was able to, to hang in there and to still remain aggressive and keep playing his defense. I think what I liked is that the mindset I felt like they empowered him to be like, no, 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 just play your game. If you foul out, you foul out, but play your game. Dude, when Keegan is being decisive and aggressive, yep. it's a game changer. And this is the area of his game as he continues to evolve. It's who do you want to be as a player? Keegan, to me, base level, if he doesn't get better, you go, this guy will be a 3 and D guy in the NBA. I think his three-point shooting is going to prove to be good enough. He, it was last year. He hit six of seven today, and that's coming into the night, hitting 25% from three this month. He just needs, if he wants to go to the next level, he's going to work on the handles this offseason. Mm -hmm. But the thing he needs to work on most is mentally. I felt like tonight I saw some signs. I saw him laugh at a bad call. I saw, yeah. him, I saw him have a hard foul on Carter when he was frustrated. I'm like... I need some chippiness from Keegan Murray. We've heard the stories about how Keegan had a little temper issue growing up a little yeah. bit on the floor. Get I don't need mad. you to dial it up to 10, but I need you to dial it up from about one to six. And sometimes you got to dial that up to eight during a game where you're kind of pissed off. I want to see that mentality. And when I see him coming in transition, stop, pop from three, that's what I want. Be decisive. Coming hard off those dribble handoffs with Sabonis. Shooting the three with he's confidence. he's good enough. He's not. He, 
I know it's only his second year, so it's hard to be like, he's streaky or he's not streaky. You know, uh, and again, I only mentioned someone like Kevin Herter, where I feel like more and more in his career, we're seeing that he has ups and downs consistently throughout his years. We're like, Keegan Murray's only in his second year, and I can't put that on him, right? That he's going to be seeing these ups and downs because he shot so well from three last year. I think he has that in him. I think yep. as he develops and keeps growing different parts of his game, he might see some of those lulls, but he has to remember and understand that what he's capable of as an NBA player. And he has to give those contributions out there with this team. They need him to. The two guys that you need more aggressiveness from, and it's it's a challenge for younger guys and, and, and guys who are out there playing with Fox and Sabonis, two you know, all-stars in this league, two guys have made all NBA teams, but they still you have to have the mindset. It doesn't mean you're selfish. It doesn't mean you're not a team guy. It's you being aggressive only helps everybody else. Because if you're passive, yes. if if you're only placating the Fox and Sabonis, it's or Monk, it's easier to defend us. We all need to be threats out there. Yep. What made last year's Kings team special? So many ways, the shooting for sure. But how many guys on the team last year had 30 points in a game? Yeah. We, everyone in the starting lineup, Terrence Davis, Malik Monk, so many guys could come in and you didn't know who was going to punch you in the mouth. Everyone played with that confidence. They weren't hesitating. That was big from Keegan Murray tonight offensively. We even talked about him yet defensively, but offensively tonight, I loved what I saw. It obviously helps when he knocks down shots, but he's been getting some open looks. Six to seven from three for Keegan tonight. It was so great. It was great seeing him just on it, you know, like we already said feeling confident, feeling like within a flow. And the biggest thing that you mentioned was being a threat. And when everyone becomes that threat, it just makes you that much more dangerous. Even Keon Ellis, I think that is someone who, who, by the way, if he wasn't aggressive and wasn't always acting like a threat, I'd be like, I get it. He's still trying to figure out his role with this team. Oh, he is already, he has already found a way to be like, I am that threat. You saw this team, you saw Orlando Magic coming under the screen on him, and he's like, okay, I'll shoot the shit out of this rock. Like, I come under a screen. I don't care. And again, it's about being a force and a threat. And even Malik Monk, even though he was missing, it's not like he was going to keep forcing once he went, oh, he didn't go 0 for 18. He went 0 for 11, right? He was looking for his groove. But um, but yeah, I just think it's so very important when Keegan Murray turns it on. 22 points for him. We mentioned seven rebounds. He also had two blocks tonight. Keegan played just under 38 minutes. He was 8 of 12 overall shooting. Loved how he played tonight. You were just talking about Keon Ellis. And I hope tonight's a good lesson for Keon Ellis with that aggressiveness. I think as he's getting more comfortable now, he's in a spot where it's like, dude, you are the starting two on a team that's fighting for the playoffs. Correct. Correct. We need you. Yeah. And you're in this spot, not just because Herter is out, mm -hmm. but because we believe in you. you we didn't believe in you. it. You earned it. You're coming out there and you're making shit happen defensively. Yeah. But offensively, we can't have you being passive, mm -mm. right? It was just what I was talking about with Keegan. You can be a threat. He was a good shooter last year in the G League. He's been a good shooter here at the NBA when he's had some minutes. Tonight, he wasn't passing anything up. This guy was confident. Even missing some shots, fine. But as Morgan said, you're going to go under on him? Fine. I'm going to shoot the three with confidence. How about late in this game? I'm going to go back on the play-by-play. -play. This is one of the more exciting moments of the game for me. I already know which one it is. I, didn't get, I wasn't able to take notes like I normally do, so I'm going through the play-by-play -play sheet on this app that we have. Keon Ellis, Keon Ellis. What, to, what was the score? Are you There's saying? Ellis in right there Where? at 91. 91. Okay, you guys all know the play I'm talking about. <laughs> that step-back oh. jumper right here. Oh. It's 104-101 okay. after Jonathan Isaac has a dunk from Bancaro. Late shot clock. Keon Ellis with Bancaro on him. Pulls that shit back. A little, little step. Like, mm, step back. Foot on the line. I wish it would have been a three. Hits the two. What? This guy with a minute 59 to go in a three-point game has the confidence to go, I'm not going to panic and pass it to someone else and, you know, throw a grenade. I'm going to shoot it because I'm a player. And I'm going to go ahead and give Bancaro a little, uh, 
Step back, long two in his face. He made it 106-101 on that play with a minute 59 to go. He was vibing. He was vibing. And again, having someone Mm. else out there that can create and or have the confidence in creating. It's not about having the confidence to just jack up a shot. It's understanding the shot selection and your ability to make that shot. Keon Ellis knew he could make that shot. He obviously, that's why he took the shot, made the shot. Um, Just an incredible late game execution from Keon Ellis as well. Well, now that we're at that point where it's 106-101 with a minute 59, let's go over the final two minutes before we talk more big picture stuff with this game. Thank you. So Ellis hits that jumper. Um, Bancaro comes down with the layup. God, Bancaro is just a strong ass dude. Bancaro did finish with 22 points, seven rebounds, five assists. He was eight of 18 though, one of six from three. So that was a good news. Uh, that made it 106, 103 after that play. Um, then, sorry, I'm looking. Then Sabonis misses a great look from three. Oh, is that the, the corner? corner? Yep. Great look. And I love, that was another one where I loved just like, Sabonis, what got into you? I'm going to, you're just going to launch a corner three. You, we don't see you. I was like, when corner. have you ever been in the corner? I loved it. I want to see Good more try. of that. I want to see that. No, that was a look. <laughs> That's that, what I'm saying. Yeah. Stretching the floor, being able yeah. to be in that corner. Dig it. Um, so after that, Bancaro misses a three and it's, so it's 106. This is, yeah, this is a key play. Bancaro misses the three. Sabonis gets the rebound. All right, gives it to Fox. He's bringing the ball up the court. Suggs puts some great pressure on him. It looks like, is there a foul? The ball went out of bounds. Well, they ruled it King's ball. Jalen Suggs is in sense going, challenge it. Mosley looks at the screen. I got to challenge it. And after you see the replay, the ball clearly goes off to Aaron Fox's foot, and you're going, fuck. Darren just got a little Dude. like lazy with it, whatever. He was like looking around yep. and just, you know, Suggs came up and boom, off his foot. Dude. Good challenge. Good challenge. Great challenge. They win the challenge. Then Wagner attack is able to score to cut it to 106, 105. I believe that was on De'Aaron Fox, right? Like just a great move. But on breaking Fox. that down though, they were still in that three, two uh, defense, right? So even because Deuce and I, we went back and rewinded that defensive possession so many times because we're like wait how did they get that switch and really it was they were still in that 3-2 defense and it was just a size thing Wagner just going once he got it he went quick on De'Aaron but it was a great play design by Orlando yep. they, they were I think they ran a horn set that created some switches so all of a sudden guys are moving around now Fox is on Wagner that's just a tough matchup and it was a tough shot like, oh it was Franz a tough Fox, shot. Fox did the best he could I thought he was into him he was physical Wagner made the shot. You tip your cap. Then on the other end, De'Aaron Fox took a three. I didn't love that three, Morgan. It was short. And I I was trying to think, did I not like it because he missed it? Or was it not the best look? You would have liked it if he made it. I mean, obviously, no matter what. But I... I, I I think when it's that late in the game and you need to get something, why not take a shot that you are so efficient with in the key, in the paint? So then... They get the rebound. Isaac is able to control that rebound. Jonathan Isaac, by the way, finished with 25 points, seven rebounds, 10 of 13 Mm. shooting, a big rebound by him. He ended up playing late in this game instead of Wendell Carter. So he gets the rebound, and then Cole Anthony hits a shot that was so incredible at the basket. His ability, Sabonis comes over to help. It looks like maybe he's got a chance to really contest it. And Anthony, like, hung in the air, hung with the ball a little bit and waited for Sabonis to get out of the way, put the shot up, in The body control by Anthony to have a big body like Sabonis come after him. And, I mean, Sabonis did a pretty good job of staying vertical within everything. Anthony just did a better job of finding a way to stay under control and finish it. So it gives Orlando a lead at 107-106. Reminder, this game was 106-101. Kings... In control, right? You're thinking they got this. Even being at 106, 103, that Fox turnover yeah. is just looming at this point. But the Kings have the ball. Suggs is putting some pressure on De'Aaron Fox on the inbound. This is a play that's controversial. It's very controversial. Suggs definitely is pushing Fox's hip. He's pushing it. Let's just say near the midcourt line. Palm open. Yep. If you want to say push, you can say push. He's jabbing him with the hand. Uh, here's what I do believe, okay? Here's what ended up happening, and then we'll tell you our interpretation of it. Copy that. Suggs 
is doing what Suggs does, playing with physicality, trying to get Fox off balance, pressure him. Yep. He was definitely using his hand to push on Fox. There's no call made, but Fox looks like he's kind of losing his balance. You're like, what's happening? Like, just play, and then Fox falls into the backcourt, steps into the backcourt, and then the official calls a foul. I'm going, oh, my God, I thought it was going to be a backcourt violation. Oh, Oh my God. And... So Orlando's pissed. They want to see a review. They're waiting. The official calls a foul. Fox goes to the free throw line. Mosley wants to challenge it, but Fox already has the ball in his hands to shoot the free throws. Fox ends up making both free throws to make it 108-107 with 21.2 to go. I've watched this replay. I watched it live when we were just watching it back. We watched Mm -hmm. the replays. I've seen it on social media. It's so... This is such a disappointing call by the official. It sucks. You know... Fox, I believe he lost his balance a little bit. I believe but the momentum of Suggs coming into him even helped lose his balance. But my thing is, here's where I go. And I'm so happy it went in that direction sure. because I obviously root for the Kings. But in my opinion, if I had that same thing, if I saw that same thing happen and that happened to Steph Curry in that corner and it was De'Aaron Fox mm-hmm. that went up in him and was just being physical yeah. and then Steph fell back in the half court. I hate the call. I would have been pissed. Yep. Like, and that's how, so that is why when I look at that situation, sure, I'm so glad it went in favor of the Sacramento Kings. But at the end of the day, I just don't think that's a call that needs to be made. And then we go, what if they challenge it? What if I don't think it would have been overturned? No. Because I still think the momentum of Suggs would have been deemed. It's a tough call in that situation. Sure. And, and the only reason they called it is because he went to the backcourt. And they, they would not want to call a backcourt violation because there was some contact. But to me, it's just such a ticky-tack call. I still don't know that Fox lost his balance enough to go in the backcourt. I was surprised. It just was such a bizarre play. But it was just, it, it felt like... For a game that was so physical, a game... I mean, there was a lot of physicality in this game. There yeah. was some missed calls. Sabonis got whacked across oh the arm once. God. They're bumping each other down low. I'm seeing Orlando Magic players fly from physicality of the Kings. Mm-hmm. They let these guys play. And then for the game, not to necessarily be decided on that, but like, look, that's a critical yeah. call there. Yep. Fox goes the line, hits both free throws, 108-107. I'm just trying to put ourselves in an Orlando fan shoes right now and say that was pissed. Fox putting pressure on Suggs Kings, you know, Kings yeah. are up by one. That's me. I'd be like, that's a, a bitch yeah, call. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, to me, let them play. Yeah. I, I, and I, it feels like the only reason they blew the whistle is because Fox went in yep. the backcourt. That was it. And I almost wish even with him going in the backcourt, there was a way of just like letting them play on and being like, look, it's not a foul because it's physical play. And I know he went in the backcourt, but we're just going to call it, hey, the momentum. It was the, it was the momentum from someone else pushing, which again, I guess by the rule book is deemed a foul. Yeah. But at the same time, I just, this whole game was played physical. So then when you see it come down to just some like that, to that, bitchy like, really? little moment, you're just like, come on, come yeah. on. But it, it, it just, and I like that type of physicality too. Same. It wasn't, same. it didn't feel like anything that w- he didn't shove Fox into the no. backcourt. No. And I don't know, was Fox trying to sell it or was Fox legit off balance? I, I know, watching back, I'm like, did Fox need to go in the backcourt? And here's my thing, though. If Fox was trying to sell it, i have been like, that is not the time to sell it mm-hmm. right then and there. But in, Dude, in, imagine if they don't call. Imagine if they call him for a backcourt violation. That's what you know, I'm we're saying. sitting here tonight, we're going, why did he do that? That's what I'm saying. And that's why, like, there are moments where I, I'm like, I'm so glad that De'Aaron sells calls now. He makes sure to try and manipulate calls. Just like... All the other stars in this league do. Yeah. That's what you need to do. That moment right there, I'm like, be strong with it. But, and, and if you're the official, like, if you're going to call it, you should just call it. Sure. That, that's the other thing. Like, if you're... Thank you. But, like, if that's a foul, if you're saying that Suggs' is contact there, putting his hand multiple times on yep. Fox's hip is a foul, just blow the whistle immediately. It's still going to be irritating to, to Orlando's bench and the players and the fans, but it's more irritating that the whistle was 10 hours late. Like you waited for Fox to stumble, go back. I mean, that was one of the latest calls I've ever seen in an NBA game. Yeah. And even someone said, you know, I'd be mad too if, it, if I were a magic yeah. fan, but, but be mad at bad officiating 
or the, a bad call um, and how it was called. Yeah. You know, it's not about being mad at the Sacramento Kings, but um, but I get it too, though, because if it is like one of those star names, if it's a LeBron, a Steph, a Kawhi, and it, they're getting that call, you're just kind of like, what? Well, Why? Th- there were some bad missed calls, calls in this game. Like I, I referenced the one where Sabonis got absolutely whacked by Jonathan Isaac and so hard and what, no call. And what about the one that De'Aaron Fox pushed Paolo Bancaro in the back? Oh, my God. Bancaro yeah. pushed uh, and shot it off the back of the back board and they called it out of bounds but i was just like okay they missed the this call is again. how they're gonna do this yep. um, i've been on i i've seen so much basketball where i've been on the other side of it where i'm just like hey if it's a physical game for the most part and you're not gonna call it ticky tack for one way and then not the other i'm glad just yeah. evenly call it cool we're good so fox goes to the free throw line to his credit makes both 108 107 with 21.2 to go uh, timeout Orlando with 21.2. They take Fultz out. They put Cole Anthony back in the game, who got a great look from three. That I shouldn't say great. Like, it was contested. It was a good contest. But, you know, a, a shot he probably feels like he could knock down. Jonathan Isaac tips it, gets the offensive yeah. rebound. It ends up to Wagner. Keegan comes out with a contest. Again, Contested, but probably a shot you can make. I was going to say, it still it had was, enough room. It was short. The ball takes an awkward bounce. Cole Anthony gets it, attacks a shot that looked easier than the one he had made previously to give Orlando the lead. Yep. Oh, he just, I don't know he if he was rushed focused. it. He wasn't focused. Cole Anthony was like, that's what it was, dude. I felt like it's either he wasn't sure with clock awareness where that was running down or he was just like am I going to take this hit here and try and act like I'm getting fouled either way he needed to focus to try and make that shot so glad he didn't because they had a lot of good looks and opportunities there where the Kings they just I felt like the magic got a few lucky bounces and it's not like the Kings weren't weren't doing something wrong you know yeah and I thought the Kings did their best in those situations it was just Guys working their asses off to try to make a play. So Anthony misses the layup. Keon Ellis gets the rebound. He is fouled by Suggs. Keon goes to the line with two seconds to go. Yeah. Misses the first one. Oh, my God. I We're calling the Stockton Kings game. I'm watching this. We're coming out of a timeout on the Stockton game on TV. I'm watching this on the laptop, and he he's missing the first. And all I'm thinking is, like, so do not miss the second one. He makes a second, puts the Kings up 109, 107, but there's two seconds left. And I'm like, how am I going to call the rest of this Stockton Kings game if there's a buzzer beater here? Anyway, two, there's a timeout on the floor. They put Joe Ingles in um, to add some shooting out there. Keegan Murray is subbed out at this point. They put Alex Len to defend the inbounder. And they inbound to Bancaro, who took like an off-balance three miss. Kings win 109-107 to get win number 41 of the season. 41 and 29. Wasn't expecting it tonight against the Orlando Magic, especially with the way that they've been playing. And and because of the way that the Kings came off of that loss against the Wizards. We've been talking a lot about their defense in the month of March, right? They're... Kings are fourth in defensive rating in the NBA in the month of March, and it's March 23rd, so it's not exactly like two days into March. Yeah. Well, Keegan Murray, excuse me, uh, Keon Ellis played that Minnesota game March 1st. The only game he has not played since is that Chicago game. That they lost. Keon's impact is real. De'Aaron Fox's impact out there. Keegan, like these guys... I think one area that is really underrated when, when... you see some of these lineups out there with Sacramento is the speed of Keon Ellis and De'Aaron Fox, their ability to recover and rotate. Keon's always positioned in a good way. Mike Brown talked about after the game where he thinks like some of the Kings are learning from Keon a little bit, just how to position their body and rotate uh, effectively. But Keon's ability to move around Get around screens. While still having his hands up. Dude, and he's super long, right? The 6'9 wingspan. He also just has a tremendous ability to contest for a team that in the, you know, before the All-Star break, the rap on them is like, wow, they're allowing so many teams to hit threes on them. Their three-point defense is just terrible. 
well, they're doing such a much, they're doing a way better job of contesting shots. And I just like the versatility that they have defensively. Like when you have Fox and Ellis able to switch multiple times and they're just locked in, Keon does a lot of talking. If you watch back late in the game, the amount of pointing and talking and communication in the zone defense so guys are in the right spot. Yep. They had that one breakdown where Isaac got a oh, God. wide open mm-hmm. dunk. That was a communication breakdown. Yep. That's what we talk about all the time with defense. It's about being active with your hands, your arms, all that stuff, but it's also about talking. This group, I feel like they're communicating great right now. It it is I wish I wish everyone could at one point in their life just experience being in a zone defense, even if it's with a whole bunch of people you don't know. If you are with a whole bunch of talkative people and you don't know any of these people, you're probably going to be able to execute one defensive possession, okay? If you are with a whole bunch of people you don't know and nobody's talking, people are just going to be everywhere. They're going to find the open gaps. They're going to be able to break down your defense, all the different things, and because you're amateur, sure. But my whole point of this is it is wild the tool of communication and when people actually understand the importance of that as a player and and by the way there there have been a lot of players over the years where they just don't do it because they think it's cute they think it's whatever or they're too good for it or what whatever it may be but the people that buy in And I think the coaches that kind of have that college basketball mentality when they go through practices, and if you're not talking up or running or whatever it may be, it really, truly can make a difference, especially when you don't have the best individual defenders in the league. Even when Keon is not stealing the ball, it's just, I'm so impressed with the deflections. I'm looking, and they have the updated tonight. Hell yeah. Keon Ellis tonight, according to NBA.com's advanced stats, had five deflections in this game. Mm. Deer and Fox had three. I want to double check this, but I'm pretty sure the league leader in deflections this year is right around three per game. And give me a chance to look this yeah, up, yeah. Morgan. No, but w- up. what's been impressive with you just about his, just Keon Ellis's activity defensively? I, I mean, it's just doing all the little things. It's, you know how we, we keep talking about his journey mm-hmm. and how he got here? Well, he had to grind it out and learn. Like it's, like, it's like I just said, there's stars in this league who never have had to grow up um, being yelled at and disciplined to be talking it up on defense because they were going to make it into the league either way. They were always going to be treated like the best player in AAU and get recruited and all the things and all the way. Keon was a guy that had to do all the little things to get noticed, to get recruited, to get drafted, or what, wherever his journey has taken him, right? So learning all those things, the fundamental things along the way, has, and then for him to be able to develop and grow into an actual NBA player and use that skill set, and it's working within this system is it's been so impactful and the numbers show it um by just seeing the defensive rating just use your eyeballs and you can see the difference with this team defense for the sacramento kings and Uh a lot of it has to do with all those little things the deflections have been big right um De'Aaron's second in the nba in deflections per game (laughs) 3.6 per game Mm. keon ellis had five tonight okay If you look at the month of March since Keon's been playing, reminder, De'Aaron Fox, 3.6 per game. That's second in the NBA. Okay. Keon Ellis in the month of March since he's been playing, 3.4 deflections per Let's game. Go. He's doing that in 28 minutes. It's huge. And he's- that, so I'm looking at March. This is just March. Fox is at 3.8. Keon Ellis is at 3.4. Domas Sabonis, just under three. The activity has increased by everyone. We talk about Keon, De'Aaron, it's active hands. Sabonis is doing a great job. I thought Sabonis had some strong moments tonight when he got switched out on Bancaro. He, we've seen this a couple of times in some matchups where, you know, the, the rap on Sabonis, he's a terrible defender, man. I don't know. I don't. Can he anchor a defense? Guys, it's not about him anchoring a defense. Thank it's you. about having, if you have Sabonis, having guys around him who can guard the ball. And he has to stay active himself, be big. He he can move. He's in the best shape he has ever been in tonight. Bankera's got him on the switch. He played off of him a little bit, has his hands out, 
did a good job to contest it even on the drive. Sabonis is strong. He's smart. He's got active hands. You're seeing that on display right now for the Sacramento Kings. You know, we talk about deflections. You know, one of the biggest Keon Ellis deflections in this game came on one of those final plays when he was guarding the out-of-bounds, uh, the passer. And I forget if it was the passer getting it in or if it went in and then it was going to the next person. Either yeah. way, the deflection... You guys, that activity and what it does to a possession. You know, I know sometimes it doesn't ultimately lead to a steal necessarily, but what the deflection does to the shot clock, to that actual possession for the uh, for the other team, um, for maybe even teammates to recover and get back to where they need to be. Yeah, Domas Sabonis being one of those other guys that is capable of doing that. And while doing that, being able to stay vertical against some of these bigger, yeah. stronger guys that come in right after him. We're this far in the podcast. Yes. We've, we've spent very little time talking about De'Aaron Fox, Demonis Sabonis. Yeah. I like that. Because I pretty much know what these guys are going to do, and it's sure. not that we don't acknowledge it, but on a night where your bench is only able to score seven points because Malik Monk was 0 for 11, it can't just be Fox and Sabonis. Other guys have to step up. That's where we spent time talking about Keon Ellis and Keegan Murray. But now we're talking about the defense, and you're right. Sabonis tonight I thought was great defensively. He had some strong moments in this one. He finished with 21 points, 14 rebounds, and 8 assists. I will go back to him in a second. I thought Barnes, there are some tough matchups for him. We already know this. <laughs> like We know Barnes has the limitations. Barnes did his best trying to deal with Bancaro, taking those shots. I thought HB had some great verticalities yeah. at the rim tonight. Strength. He had some nice moments. How about Alex Len oh, yes. coming in? He didn't play heavy minutes. Mm -mm. He blocked a couple of shots, had another good contest. I liked how he came in and competed defensively. Keegan did his thing defensively. We spent so much time talking about Keon and De'Aaron, but the most consistent defender on the Sacramento Kings this year has been, Ke been Keegan Murray. I know I just went over a lot of names. Where do you want to touch on that? Okay, yeah, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you tell me. Well, I was just talking about Keegan's defense. I was talking about Alex Len, Sabonis, all those guys. Did you want to talk more defense? I was ready to go Sabonis or De'Aaron. Let's talk Sabonis. Demona Sabonis. He has now tied Kevin Love 53 consecutive double-doubles, one so away cool. from breaking that mark. 21 points, 14 rebounds, 8 assists in this game. 7 of 14 shooting, 6 of 6 at the free throw line. Another game where teams are trying to beat the shit out of him. And this is something he's got to keep fighting through. I felt like I said this at the start, Morgan. He came in with a mindset like he had that face. I'm going to come in the and compete. demon eyes. Yeah. When you watched Sabonis tonight, what did you like about how he played? I felt like he was consistent out there with... Um, Every game. But, but yes... Yes, but to the point where he was getting hacked at times mm -hmm. and his frustrations might have led to turning to a ref once in a while and being like, what the hell is that? But it didn't bleed into his entire game and take him out of his game, especially when they needed him most on the defensive end uh, to clean up whatever else was happening down there as a second line of defense. But then on the offensive end, still being able to just be strong and score and then make your free throws, six for six at the free throw line. That to me... Seeing that improvement right there shows something is shifting within his focus. And when you have your leaders more focused at the free throw line and doing what they need to do at the free throw line, it's one of those things, again, it's not deflating for the rest of the team and everyone just vibes off that. And you vibe off a game like this for Sabonis, 14 rebounds as well. Eight so assists. We spent a lot of time talking about that the first few months of the season. And it's like, Look, Fox and Sabonis are the ones that are going to get to the line the most, right? Those, Sabonis playing inside when Fox is aggressive, they're going to get to the line. Those guys had been shooting like shit for most of the year from the free throw line. Shit. And what do you know? Here we are post-All-Star break. The, the focus <laughs> has been better. You know, they, they still miss them. But so the, different. The difference, you, you feel the difference when now all of a sudden the Kings have been playing or shooting at the free throw line like a top 10 free throw shooting team in the league. That's huge for this group. It's it's huge. It, like, I know it's huge because it's it. a lot of times it can come down to free throws and those extra yeah, points. Dude. And then how many times in the beginning of the season we're being like, wow, 12 free throws missed. That's the game right there. And no. it's not only 
that because of the point. It's just like what we were just saying. When your best player is missing, how deflating it is that it's like you're missing a free shot. You just worked your ass off for how long to even get to that free throw line, and then you can't even make it. You can't even execute. Well, tonight he did. Sabonis at the free throw line since the All-Star break is shooting 76%. He was in the 60s before that, okay? Like, wow. not good. I think he was like six, 69%, not good. something like that. Breaking news. Uh, De'Aaron Fox, 80, just under 83% at the free throw line the month. Or, excuse me, is that month of March or since the All-Star break? No, this is since the All-Star break. So okay. just under 83% for him. Monk is at 88%. Keegan's at 88%. So... Those are numbers that you like to see a lot. But yeah, Sabonis was himself again tonight. It was good to see him bounce back. You know, teams are going to come at him. And that's going to be the biggest challenge for Sacramento is finding ways to function. Teams want to be physical with Sabonis. But one way I think you can bat that is get into your stuff earlier. Get into your early offense. Don't just play the half-court game. And I think there are times where the Kings try so much against the bigger or the smaller teams to try to, like, post them up and expose mismatches. Those teams are just going to throw doubles and Thank different you. looks at him. I'd rather function like you normally do. Get him going in dribble handoffs with other players. Get him going at the elbow and go from there. Yeah, you even saw him make that mid-range shot, you know, where everything kind of broke down for the Magic, and then he had an open uh, midi, and he just, like, shot it with confidence, made it. And, like, yes, like, get that shot going for yourself. But on top of that, there's something else I noticed in this game, too. A few times when Keon Ellis would come off of a DHO or just a screen off Sabonis. And my favorite thing about it was that the timing was perfect. And when I say that, I sometimes think it's hard to just have that chemistry or that timing with uh, another guard that maybe you haven't been playing a lot of minutes with throughout the season. But it just shows that their basketball IQ both those guys is just such a high basketball IQ that they're smart. They understand what wins and you just see the way that they even bump off each other. Mm. And sometimes there's guards in this league that don't want to do that, that don't want to feel that, but that is the way that you get to utilize the screen the best way. And Keon Ellis being able to do that off of Sabonis and Sabonis, obviously just making the most space for some of these guards has just been incredible. So, he finished with, we, we mentioned the double-double. Keon Ellis, we spent so much time talking about, hey, we loved his aggressiveness on offense, and of course what he has defensively. Let's highlight the fact that this guy, a career-high 19 points tonight. He had oh 19 God. points. He had six assists. He had five rebounds, two steals, seven of 12 shooting. Keon Ellis, you know he's feeling confident? The guy took nine threes. Yeah. He was four of nine from three. Love it. He's from like 30 miles from Orlando, so he had family at the game tonight. So he's able to show out in front of them and get the win. Those numbers. I mean, you're not expecting 19 points from Fionnals, but like the guy was impactful across the board. We've seen him be so impactful without the scoring. Yeah. They needed his scoring tonight. They needed every one of those points tonight, right? Seven bench points. Yeah. yeah. They needed their starters Dude, to step it's up. It's so and good. I love it. And I, that's why I said earlier, I just hope this game is the game that unlocks his aggressiveness. Like, don't pass up good looks. You're a good shooter. Be confident out there. You belong in the NBA. You're proving it every time you go out there. I want to shout out the chat. We got a ton of people hanging out with us late on a Saturday night. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us after this Kings win. Someone was like, uh, where is it? I don't know where it, it bounced okay. around. Uh, Lil Reyes says, Keon is our Alex Caruso. <laughs> hey, man, if, if he can keep this up, you might be saying better than Caruso because he can shoot on a consistent basis sure. from beyond the arc. That's big time shit. Um, so we mentioned Ellis with 19, Keegan with 22. Let's get to De'Aaron Fox tonight. Thank you. 31 points for De'Aaron Fox. He also had eight rebounds in this game. He mm. had three steals, two assists. He did on 10 of 22 shooting. He did take 12 threes, three of 12, and he was eight of nine at the free throw line. I felt like early on this game settled too much from three. He got it going when he started attacking, and he had some incredible finishes in this game. Incredible. As I know he's confident with the three, and he still jacked up 12 of them tonight. Morgan, Fox always, in my opinion, needs to set the tone by getting in the mid-range and getting in the paint first. He does. He 
I, I completely agree with that. And sometimes I'm curious what his mindset is on that. Because even when we saw going into January, I think it was whenever it was when he was shooting 40% from three point land, like he was just on a tear looking good from the outside and it's dropped. It's definitely dropped. And I don't think it's dropped just because like the defense having to respect that three point shot. I think it's also dropped because it's just a little bit different, you know, with the flow of the game, maybe um, he's doing so many things also on the defensive end. He's using a lot of legs that I think he, he should still make sure that he's using his legs to push, push, push into the paint, push the pace, all the different things. And tonight I felt like he did a much better job of that. I know he still shot those 12 threes and there was only a few of those where I was like, Oh, I don't like, but out of the 12, like I can't say I didn't like like 10 of them. You know what I mean? You didn't like 10 of them. No, or are you saying you, you're, I'm saying I liked, I liked most mo- of them. Exactly. Uh, the Kings on the night end up 15 of 40 from three. That's 37 and a half percent. Orlando was 10 of 35. No, De'Aaron, it was a it was a good bounce back night for him. 31 points and just what he was doing defensively oh out there. Oh my god, dude. Guys engaged, man. It's uh it's fun to watch. It's fun to see it. And it's so it's still so irritating that they lost to Washington Washington because just <sighs> For a second, oh, God. imagine how we'd be feeling right now had they beat Washington. Like, just even if they escaped with a win, we'd be like, they fought. I would probably like be drunk right now or something. Yeah, we'd be like, like, oh like my God, is it happening? They're on fire. <laughs> uh, but, you know, look, uh, it's like you can't harp on that forever. No. You lost no. that game and you have to move on. And I felt like they moved on and we saw the version of the Kings we needed to see tonight. And that was the gritty play defense. Mm. Play defense. You know, it's wild. Mike Brown's been talking about all year, and he's been challenging his guys, and I think some people, fans, maybe even some players, probably like, oh, can we just go back to just jacking up threes and scoring a ton? He is so much a believer of we need to play defense because if we play defense, it's going to help our offense and we'll win games because of truth. our defense. And, like, dude, now he's getting evidence. He's going, are you guys watching March? When we lock in, why did we lose the Wizards game? Because we had stretches of not being locked in. Yeah. When we were locked in, how did we go on a you know twenty one to two run? How did we go on a fifteen zero run because of our defense? Yep. And that level of compete, they're showing more and more, especially now that Keon Ellis is involved. Like uh-huh. they can be competent defensively, better than I think anybody, including us, thought they could be. There, no, and that's exactly. It. And I think when you look at even that Wizard game, and you go, oh, they were making all their shots. Yeah, there's going to be nights that guys make their shots, but they could have made their lives way more difficult. They could have made Kyle Kuzma's life yep. way more difficult in that game. And that's that's what wasn't happening. And tonight, they were making Paolo's life more difficult. I don't think they necessarily were the only reason why Paolo Bancaro was missing all the shots. I think he was having an off night as well. But you saw how the Orlando Magic shot against the Sacramento Kings at Golden 1 Center early on this year in that double overtime game. They were shooting lights out from three. Yes, it was a good shooting night, but the Kings... We're not contesting threes. There was a lot of open threes. Yeah. There was a, a lot of shitty defense happening there too. Even though they started finally making adjustments and picking things up. But tonight's game, I felt like they didn't have to make so many adjustments because I, except, you know, going to zone and still being able to break down Orlando's offense, but they still were contesting shots and making life more difficult. The other thing Mike Brown pointed out, in addition to him talking about the zone defense, where he said they won, they ran 20 plus possessions of it. He thinks maybe 22, 23 uh, Orlando scored on seven of those. He indicated that they allowed no second chance points in the second half of the game, which was pretty significant wow. um, because Orlando in this game had the offensive rebound advantage 12 to, or excuse me, yeah, 12 to six. Okay. And they had seven second chance points. So did Sacramento. So that was good. They didn't get killed with the second chance points in the game. Um, Let's get to a couple people in the chat. Adam in the chat says that Fox three at the end, uh, near the end of the fourth, was disgusting. The bad threes <laughs> and too much iso ball at the end of the fourth has to stop. Get in the paint and score. Adam, I, I agree with you. You know, I the one thing I admire about Fox is just he he's such a confident guy. But I think sometimes the Kings get in their own way where they're thinking too much about, like, going for the home run instead of just, hey, let's just get – Let's win this game. That's not the only thing. 
Hmm. They're going up against a team with a lot of length. And when I say that, when I say that, I think sometimes too, that also can get in their head when I've seen them also be able to create and score on length. Right. But also we know if Fox gets in the paint, it's not just about him trying to score. It's like, can you set somebody else? Can you you get the ball moving? And I think tonight there were times stretches of this game where I didn't think, especially early in the first quarter, that they played with enough pace. They were slowing it down too much to Orlando's pace. The Kings have to be the ones to dictate the pace. They have to make sure they're not standing around and watching Fox. They need to have active cutters because all you need to do, especially against a team that's third in defensive rating, that only allows 108 points a game. Look, Kings barely scored uh, you know, over that. Yeah. And so Orlando did what they normally do, but you have to... Make sure there's movement at all times. Even if they're bumping you, you need to make them work. And I, I think they, that Fox has this habit, especially in close games, where and it's the Kings too, where they, they go for the home run as opposed to just make the right play. Do what got you there. Killer, killer mentality. And it's like, yeah. especially when they are, when there are pieces that are that good in this league, in the best league in the world, they're that good to... Um, be able to score over some of these guys, into some of these guys, elevate over the, whatever it may be. Like, it doesn't just have to be a three-point yeah. shot. Um, something else I wanted to mention, because we didn't mention this when you brought up the Stockton Kings. One of my favorite things that happened at the end of the Stockton Kings game, Stockton Kings get the win. Mason Jones gets another triple double. He runs over to Deuce and I, and I thought he was going to say like, Oh, did I, you know, like did I get the triple double. What and he, he did. Say? He had 25 points. He had 10 rebounds, 10 assists in the Stockton Kings when they clinch a playoff spot. Yeah. He goes, comes over. He goes, did we win? And I'm like, at first I'm hesitating. Like, what do you mean? Are you okay? Yeah. yeah you won. He was asking if Sacramento won in Orlando. He checked in at halftime. Hey, what's the score? He kept asking us what the score was at times. He comes up at the end of the game. Did we win? I'm like, you won. And you he, won. It was great. It was great. He's so eager to like make an impact in the NBA. And you know, like he's trying to stay focused on like the task at hand, which is, dude, you're, you, this is which where you're is. at. Be present. You are in the G League playing minutes. Yep. But he wants to be up there so yeah. bad. He wants to be a part of things. But I thought it was super cute that he comes up. It's like, did we win? I loved it. I, I mean, that yeah. was after, you know, like dominating, having another triple double and just really being a force out there on the floor and then being excited to see if the Sacramento Kings won. It was just cute. I appreciate everyone hanging out with us. We got a lot more of the podcast. I do want to mention this. Uh, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash deuce and mo. We got some more content we got to add. I think I'm going to do a Keon Ellis tape too for Patreon subscribers. But in addition to that, what I want to mention is we do have March 28th, a members only Q&A. Let's go. If you want to be a part of it, go to patreon.com slash deuce and mo. We have a good time. Basically a Q and a, it's like a chat. It's everything. Yeah. But people have a chance. We just read the chat the whole time and we just talk and hang out and we have some topics and we throw, play some games and we hang out. We do it every month. So if you want to be a part of it, patreon.com slash deuce and mo. Uh, Morgan, who would be your rock and soul player Mm. of the game? I'm going to give it to Keon Ellis. I think being close to his hometown and just having his, career high 19 points in the nba what's the chat say what's the chat say about that what do you think who do you think the player of the game should be some people voted oh 45 percent of the chat keon ellis okay 25 percent say keegan murray 20 percent give it to De'Aaron and fox 10 percent sabonis 21 14 and 8 also real fast can we just acknowledge that sabonis is 24 21, 14, and 8. His 53rd consecutive double-double. And we're just like, yeah, anyway, Sabonis. Oh, my God. Good for him. Let's not take this guy for granted, guys. He is having one of the best seasons that a Sacramento Kings player has Uh, ever had. I I am obsessed with the guy. Like, I I just... I. He's so cool. I, I'm not trying to make the Sabonis Halliburton thing again because it's just it's a topic that will never go away. I understand that. Yeah, but Sabonis has changed the Sacramento Kings with what he has brought. People want to point out his limitations all the time, and it annoys the shit out of me. Like, no one's proclaiming he's a perfect player. He's got flaws. His arms are as long as mine, and that's probably the worst part about him. That How can you not like a guy who plays physical always plays hard, who's pretty consistent, who likes sharing the ball, and he wins. 
He puts up numbers. How do you hate on that? I don't get it. I don't get it. And it's not, like again, we've mentioned this before, and he's not a piece of shit person. Thank like you. that's that's the you know like we've seen that in the past in this franchise and in other franchises like, where it's just like no, they're so unlikable. He is very likable dude. in so many different ways, and it contributes to so much of the success with this team. So incredible. Yep. So uh, some people saying Keegan, people saying um, Keon, Steve, or one of the OG Steven Brown says, do you calling grown men super cute? Yeah. No problem with that. It was super cute of Mason Jones to say that. It was. All right. Let's look to see who the Rock and Soul player of the game is. <gasps> what? We, yep, we did no, it. No, you did not. We did it tonight. We did it. We you did it tonight. Did it. I'm going co. Okay. I- I'm going co player of the game. I'm going with Keegan Fine. and Keon. Morgan, we knew Fox and Sabonis are pretty much going to do their thing. Yep. On a night when Malik Monk goes 0 for 11, oh. these two men, young guys, stepped up on both sides of the ball. They played defense like <laughs> dogs, and they were effective offensively. Keegan Murray going six of seven from three was massive. He had 22 points, seven rebounds, two blocks. Keon Ellis. Keon. Keon. Do you have it? Well, no, not yet. Oh. Don't Keon Ellis yet. had 19 points, six assists, five rebounds. Amazing defense. Our Rock and Soul co players of the game. Check out Rock and Soul Diner in downtown Sacramento, just six blocks away from Gold One Center. Nom, 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 nom. I need to make a trip there tomorrow. I man. know. A little breakfast. I'm a little Benny at 11 a.m. You can get it all day, I was going to say. So have fun with that. Please check out Rock and Soul Diner. Uh, six blocks from Golden One Center. Actually, you know what would be cool if you're not going to the game Monday? Go and watch the game there. Oh, yeah. You They've get got breakfast, lunch, and dinner drinks, too. But, like, you can get breakfast all day. And you get 25% off apps, 25% off drinks while watching the game there. Any Kings game, home or away. Yep. <laughs> Shut up. You already know this. You already know this. A Rock and Soul Diner in Sacramento, just six blocks from Golden One Center, a local spot. They've got murals. So then, don't they have Fox and Sabonis oh, murals? Oh, yeah, they do. They do. They had a local I artist uh, paint them inside. It's really, it's honest, it's so cool, and it's so delicious. Mm -hmm. Just go check it out. Yeah, we're also presented tonight by our friends over at Northwest Exteriors. If you're thinking about new windows for your house, there's no better place to go than the local experts at Northwest Exteriors. You can check out their showroom in Rancho Cordova or go to our website, trustnorthwest.com. New windows. You're going, do I need new windows? If your windows are old, yes, you probably do. And I know it's like, oh, but it's an investment. I, I don't know. Well, Northwest Exteriors is going to pay the sales tax for you through the April. It's a pretty good deal. It's a no brainer. And it's going to increase the value of your house. Yep. It's going to save you on your energy bills mm -hmm. and make your house look more sexy. Yeah, it is. So make sure to go. Simply the best. Trust Northwest. Every time. Every time. Um, who would be, and I love the chat's perspective on this. What would be, excuse me, your Sharif Jewelers moments of the game? My moment, one of my moments. Mom, I, I have three that Come on, out. I just was about to talk. Thank you. Monk to Fox Alley. You didn't even have that one, did you? I did. It was actually Damn. referencing the Ellis Steel that went oh. to Malik Monk for the Fox Alley. Incredible. Then it's the moment. It's the Sharif Jewelers moment of the game. But the other ones I put on there, De'Aaron Fox, a tough shot over Jonathan Isaac. Okay. Oh, the and one. Keon Ellis' step back over Bancaro to make it 106-101. And just acknowledging this moment, uh -huh. just perspective. And I think it's important to have this. I said this all of last year, and I don't know how much you guys embraced it. What? I said enjoy the moment yeah. because it's never going to feel like it did last year no. until you take a leap. This year, expectations, the team's been weird. It's bad losses. It's felt different. We acknowledge that. But what we need to appreciate tonight. The Kings have been in Sacramento since 1985, the mm -hmm. 39th season of Sacramento Kings basketball. Tonight, they won their 41st game. It's only the 10th time in 39 mm, years so weird. that they've had a winning season. Dude. So I mean, 
So we can bitch, we can complain. Uh-huh. This team's not championship contender. <laughs> yes, yes, have expectations and and hold people accountable, but also appreciate where we are. Not you know having seasons where they win twenty games. In so many choices of moments. Yeah, just like there are so many choices. At Sharif Jewelers and so many choices of locations like for Sharif Jewelers. You're welcome. Um, I've been to multiple locations now and every single location, there's always someone from the family there. So it just always feels so welcoming, so warm. The Some of the greatest people that we have in Sacramento and seriously, just such an iconic business. And I'm just so... Sometimes I'm just, I'm so, so thankful that we partner with them. I really just love all of our partnerships, but, um, yeah, Sharif Jewelers, make sure you go check them out. It doesn't matter if it's a birthday gift, engagement, whatever you guys need, they'll always help you out. Just let them know that we sent you. Yeah. Appreciate their support. So did you pick a moment? All three. All three of those yeah. moments are down. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. Thank you. A couple people in the chat mentioning Alex Len with the double block. He was really good tonight. Ooh. Also thumbnail. Says uh, Keegan and Keon both with clutch fourth quarter buckets. Yeah, dude. De'Aaron Fox had 12 in the fourth quarter. Keegan Murray had nine. And then we mentioned Keon Ellis just just playing outstanding. That Mm-mm-mm. that step back jumper over uh, Bancaro was absolutely money. Uh, coming up next for the Sacramento Kings, they get home. They have Philly Monday. This oh, yeah. is a tough week. And okay. this is a massive week. So you just come off a three-game road trip. They'll be off tomorrow. They'll relax, get ready to go. Monday, they take on a Sixers team, shorthanded, of course, and beat is still out. We were watching them last night take on the Lakers. They lost that game. They will be on the second night of a back-to-back. They are playing tomorrow, but they're playing tomorrow afternoon. They don't have to travel. They were played the Lakers loss. Now they play the Clippers on Sunday afternoon at 1230. They'll be in Sacramento on Monday. Tyrese Maxey's still a problem. We know that. The problem. Kings have struggled with shorthanded teams. No doubt about it. So that's going to be a challenge. Then the next night, a game on TNT, they take on the Dallas Mavericks. As it stands tonight, Sacramento's a half game out of the top six. The Suns are ahead of them. Kings are a half game behind them. They are technically tied with the Dallas Mavericks, but have the advantage right now. Dallas is in town for two games this week. Monday, it's against Philly. Tuesday on TNT against the Mavs. Mm-hmm. Then the two teams get a couple of days off, play again Friday in Sacramento. I can't overstate how big these games Dallas was in Sacramento last year and I remember them playing two big games when the, it was neck and neck uh, Luca didn't play in the first one and then the next one was Luca and Kyrie's first game Sacramento won that game when De'Aaron Fox took over in the fourth quarter and I believe overtime if I'm not mistaken it was classic the Kings were able to separate themselves from the Mavs this week is massive it's and massive I don't want to look ahead to Dallas too far yet they got to get Monday, and it's hard because you say they got to. It's gonna be hard. I get it, but Monday it's a shorthanded Sixers team. You're at home. You have to win that game. Like Morgan, have expectations for Christ's sake. This is for Christ's sake. I mean, no, I do. I'm I not do. saying it's gonna be easy. Okay, I'm saying I they got to like, get it. I feel like I. I just I yes, I want them to get it. Um, I've we've seen them lose to the Sixers without Joel Embiid before. I feel like though the yeah. Kings, we have seen their ups and downs of being a better team, but I still just question what what team are we going to get on the home floor on Monday? And I go, if you don't if you get the team against the Washington Wizards, Maxie's going to have is going to look yeah. like a superstar that needs to be an MVP Tobias candidate. Tobias Harris, Paul to- Reed. Dude, Tobias Harris, Lowry. Just, all of the all of the peeps. They've got all of the peeps. pieces that can obviously hurt you. Yes. Um, I want to look at how the Sixers overall, just like their trends uh, lately. Of course, they're coming off that loss to the Lakers uh, last night. Whew, it's been pretty rough for them lately. So they're coming off back-to-back losses at Phoenix, at LA. Before that, they beat Miami. They beat Charlotte, lost to Milwaukee, New York, beat New York, lost to New Orleans, Memphis, Brooklyn. So that's kind of their stretch yeah. lately. They've been up and down. They're 38 and 32. Uh, they have been starting last night. They started Lowry, Maxi in the backcourt with Ubre, Mo Bamba, Tobias Harris, also playing KJ Martin, 
Uh, Nick Batum off the bench. Paul Reed. Cameron Payne is there. And, of course, your old friend Buddy Heald, who only played 13 minutes for them yesterday against the Lakers. You know, and, and I think, really, when you look at this team, they don't – you look at the pieces, the individuals. To me, they didn't – when I – just recently watched them against the Lakers. I, there was nothing that goes, oh man, they're a team that's really together. They know how to get things done. It's like, no, yep. Tobias Harris, Tyrese Maxey. It's those guys that just can, they're just incredible scorers at times. I mean, especially Tyrese Maxey, his ability to get to the rim, turn on the Jets. But um, you and I talked about this too. He's someone that like still needs to develop a mid-range game. So can you make sure that you're pushing him kind of in a situation that he doesn't feel as comfortable with. And the Sixers have been free-falling, of course, with Embiid's injury. They're in the eighth spot right now in the East. Uh, they are tied with Miami, who's in seventh. Uh, they're a game and a half behind the Pacers in the top six. So, um, you know, you don't want to keep falling into play-in situation. They look like they're pretty safe in the eighth spot because the Bulls are behind them, and, the, you know, they've got a comfy lead on the Bulls. But... You know, Philly's still trying to position themselves to get back in the top six. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a big game for them. You can't take them lightly. They've got too many professionals that have been around the league. If You just have to lock in. We acknowledge that. And then Tuesday against Dallas. Dallas is going to be on the second half of back-to-back -back in that game. They're going to be in Salt Lake City the night before the Jazz has not been playing good basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, they got blown out by the Rockets tonight, who have won eight in a row. And all of a sudden, they're a game and a half behind the Warriors for the final play-in spot. Go. Go. Um, I want to see it. See what? Western Conference standings. Uh, the Western Conference <laughs> standings uh, as it stands. Um, you've got Sacramento in seven, Dallas in eight, Lakers nine, Warriors 10 with a game and a half lead on the Houston okay. Rockets who have now won eight in a row. Ooh. And the Warriors are getting ready to hit the road. They The Warriors come off a loss last night to the Pacers. Uh, the Rockets, in fact, play the Warriors coming up on April 4th. So these two teams meet up and... Rockets kind of have some, they've got Portland twice on the schedule. They got some opportunities. They still have Utah again. So we'll see what that looks like. Um, but yeah, the standing, I mean, the Dallas games are massive and I think Sacramento, I think they match up well against Dallas mm -hmm. and I think they can beat Dallas, but beating it, you, you can't lose both. <laughs> this week is pretty much telling you. You could bury Dallas a little bit. You can get some massive separation on them this week mm -hmm. if you were able to take care of them. Yeah, and that's, it's, again, it, it's such, it sounds like such a cop-out when I say, like, what t Kings team are you going to get? That feels, like, so cliche or, like, well, why don't you break it down a little bit for me? But truly, the inconsistency we have seen from this team this year, I don't have certain expectations going into these games. Now, what I will tell you, because of this stretch of basketball, and we've seen much better basketball, like defensively, and truly it's been more because Keon Ellis has been in that starting unit and it's just made the world of a difference. Um I can go in with more confidence being like, I know what they're capable of, but I also have seen them shit the bed, like diarrhea shit the bed. <laughs> okay. Well. You have to be that descriptive of it. I mean, picture it. I, I, do I have to picture it? <laughs> I don't want to picture that. <laughs> uh, the anyway. It is clean tonight, okay? It is a massive, it, it, we, uh, we can't. We can't understand. I mean, it's a massive week for the Sacramento yeah. Kings. I mean, it's every game is big here, but these two at home. And I do, I hate the fact that th this is on a back-to-back, -back, mm -hmm. but I'm glad both teams are going to be on back-to-backs. Mm -hmm. The Kings have it easier because they are at home for a back-to-back. -back. The, the Mavs have to travel from Salt Lake City to Sacramento. Yeah. But then that second matchup, they, there's time. It feels like a playoff series a little bit a there. A little where bit. You've got that gap in between. And I think right there, Deuce, this is a great, that's a great test. And it's it's telling to be like, okay, would if if the Kings were to make the top six in the Western Conference, would they even be capable of being a good postseason team this season? Last year, it was just such a different vibe, such a different feel. And this year, it's like, I don't know. I don't know what they're capable of. They know what they're capable of. Um, and I finally do feel like there's more structure and consistency within the rotation. Obviously not in that Wizards game. Mike 
Brown had some short leashes for people, didn't like what anybody was doing in that game. And you know that's not what don't, goes down in the postseason. Though. Don't ever play, don't ever take Keon Ellis out of a game again, Mike Brown, you <laughs> son of a gun. You tell him. I'm just saying, that was irritating. <laughs> Get him. Um, Morgan, I have some topics I want to get to, and I want to ask the chat to, um, we're calling it NBA thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay. Uh, the first one, let's stick with the Rockets. Thumbs up, thumbs down. The Rockets are a legit threat for the play and they've won eight in a row. They're just a game and a half behind the Golden State Warriors. Thumbs up, thumbs up. I mean, yeah, I, I stretch alone. I, this last eight games, they've been Awesome offensively. I think the biggest difference is Jalen Green, who has struggled. It looks like he hasn't found his way. There was talk that they were maybe trying to trade him to get Mikel Bridges. During this eight games, this eight game winning streak, he's averaging almost 30 a game, and he's playing with that swagger again. They've got a good combination of vets with some young guys that will compete for Adoka. The offense looks like it's clicking a little Dogs bit. Dogs and Dylan and Brooks. I just look at the Warriors. I wa we watched that game. We're watching Warriors Pacers last night, and the Warriors tried to play at the same pace as the Pacers. And it was cute. It, it was cute for the first quarter. I said to Morgan, I'm like, this is awesome. The Warriors think they can run with Indiana. They can't. And what do you know? The old men can't do it anymore. There's, you still acknowledge that they've got, they have Hall of Fame talent. All the things. They're not those guys anymore. And so this and is a big stretch. They have the flashes, though, of they being do. those guys. But and Steph needs help now. Dude, whenever... And, and this is the thing. Steph plays so free and loose. He can do that because he can fumble the basketball. It could be a broken play, and he can figure it out. But then when anyone else thinks that they can do that, it's like, no, no, no. You need to play with more structure around Steph playing loose and freely, right? And so, I don't know. It's just... it's it's. It's about this team yeah. truly just not finding their identity. I know Clay has been playing so much better coming off the bench. Um, but then as soon as it goes to Chris Paul, uh, which, by the way, I even said this to you yesterday. I was like, dude, what a great backup you have. You just go to Chris Paul. But then you, you've been noticing more and more of the age stuff yep. when well, it comes to that. And, and the, the biggest reason, too, you look at the Warriors schedule coming up here and you're like, do the Rockets have a chance? Well, yes, because the Warriors schedule... At Minnesota tomorrow, at Miami, at Orlando. Mm. Those are three tough games. Yeah. Then they get a little bit of break. You get at Charlotte, at San Antonio. They play the Mavs, a matchup with the Rockets that will be massive. The Mavs again. They play the Jazz twice. That's what's going to help uh, Golden State a little bit potentially. And then they play the Lakers, Blazers, and Pelicans. My point to that is... They're, they, if they don't get their shit together, they're so inconsistent. Houston's there, and Houston's doing this without Shengu. And oh my god, I forgot about that too. And one more thing too, even just thinking about what the Warriors have been doing and what they even did last night. Like for example, Kaminga has been fantastic for them, right? And just his athletic ability to get the rim and everything, whatever. But then there's these moments Dude. where you see his youth too, where it's like, why isn't Steph Curry taking that shot? I know you're feeling confident and feeling yourself, but there's 30 seconds left, you know, you within this know. quarter, or whatever. You got to make sure to find, create for Steph Curry. You want Steph Curry taking that shot. So you just see the difference, uh, the age gap, and then you see the flaws within it. And then there's times when it just, it really works well for them too. Jalen Green had 41 points for the Rockets in their win over Utah, who's, you know, playing with a lot of young guys at this point. Uh, Fred Van Vliet had 34. Four points. Damn. So, um, yeah, the Rockets. The Rockets are moving up, man. They they've been hot. You know, they're playing some competitive basketball right now. Uh, next up, NBA thumbs up, thumbs down. Morgan. Yeah. Do you like the Chris Paul feuds with Tony Brothers and with Scott Foster? Thumbs up, thumbs down on those feuds. Uh, I I'm going to go thumbs down. I feel like sometimes Chris Paul just seems kind of like an ass. Uh, after the game, here's what Chris Paul said about Tony Brothers after getting ejected with like six seconds to go when the game was already decided. Here's what he had to say. So I'll ask you just to get out of the way. Uh, the technicals uh, and the one at the end, what led to that? Did it seem like uh, they were looking for a technical? What, hap what happened there? Oh, man. Oh, Tony. <laughs> He's talking to me. I talk back. I called him a TikToker. I got a tech. No, the first one. 
I just said TikToker. Gave me a tech. Was there? Second one I just said, that's too much powers. You know what I mean? He gave me another tech. TikToker meaning? <laughs> he the judge, the jury, and all that. He is referencing something that Tony Brothers said. I guess Tony Brothers did the interview, yes. and uh, this is from that clip. I don't even really care too much for basketball. I don't even really uh, that's not even the full clip. I'm trying to find the full clip. He said, I don't care too much about basketball. It's like, wait, what? What? The? That's what Chris Paul ended up sharing on his IG story last night after the game. Oregon was Tony Brothers. I don't even really care too much for basketball. I'm the judge, the jury, prosecuting attorney, defense attorney, everybody. Right. See the judge, the jury, uh-huh. Chris Paul, first team, all petty. Um. Chris Paul, I think, here's my thing with Chris. What's your thing with Chris? This thumbs down on it because, like, he acts like he's so innocent in this shit. That's a he, good point. He's just as bad as, like, Scott Foster or, in this case, Tony Brothers. Tony Brothers, you're rejecting the guy with six seconds to go. What like, are you doing? Yeah, thank what you. What are you doing? Tony Brothers, I think it's time to go. Well, and he it, doesn't love basketball. You don't love basketball sure. and you're an official. And you could tell it. You see Tony Brothers at a review. You The best officials. Oh, my God. Let's say um, Zag Zarba. The dreamy Zag Zarba. There's a challenge on the floor. Dreamy. He'll come up to the desk, look at the camera. Look in your eyes. Looks so just it sucks you in a little oh, bit, Oh, it right? totally does. It's like after review, it showed that the legal position. Let me read. Yeah. Oh, okay, be yeah. Zach Zarba. Hey, babe. No, no, oh, God, no. Zach, <laughs> Zach doesn't he kind of, that's why no, it feels he like does he does the camera. The, no, but it, it, with his eyes, he says that. He Then say it with your eyes. Okay, okay. After review, it showed that De'Aaron Fox was not in legal guarding position mm-hmm. on the play. Therefore, it's an offensive foul. Blah, 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 you know, the explanation. Talk Tony to Brothers will go. Honey. Challenge is confirmed. Unattractive. What are we doing, Tony Brothers? <laughs> Go away. It's so true, though. If you don't like the game, I don't want you around the game. I know. That's I know. you know what I mean. There's too many people that love the game that want to be around it, and that like I just I I'm totally with you, and that's where like I am thumbs down on this situation, but I'm like thumbs down to Chris Paul and Tony Brothers in this situation. Um, someone mentioned uh, something that happened with Bull Bull tonight. I'm not familiar with it, so uh, drop a link if you know, because I would love to talk about it. Um, next up, thumbs up, thumbs down, Morgan. Uh, how about this theory on NBA Reddit? J.J. Reddick will be the head coach of the Vegas expansion team that LeBron owns. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Love theories. Now, this person on NBA Reddit was making the point that it seems like J.J. and LeBron are vibing a lot. Now they just launched their new podcast. Watch that episode. Fantastic stuff. Do you buy that theory that J.J. Reddick will be the head coach of the Vegas expansion team that LeBron owns? Here's my thing. Why? Why would... I, I think even in that first episode that we saw yeah. of the podcast, of the new podcast with JJ and LeBron, they were kind of talking about coaching guys, coaching a whole bunch of rich, young players out they there. They joked and like, about it, almost like uh, like they were in on yeah. the joke together. That's how I took it. Seriously? And remember, JJ Reddick just- did interview for the Raptors job last year. That's a good point, too. I don't I To me, I'm like... Why would you want to do that when you could be a broadcaster and talk about the game? And they lo- he Dude. loves the game. He loves talking about the game. I love hearing him talk about the game, but I would understand if he did want to teach the game too. I've never understood, like, when you've got, like, a legit media job. J.J. Redick is crushing it right now, right? You think about with his podcast, this new one with LeBron. Mm-hmm. He is on the A-team for ESPN and ABC. He'll be doing the NBA Finals with Brain and Doris Burke. Dude, there's no pressure. You're loved. You go on first take, and they, they do the debate stuff. You drop, you go at them and drop your wisdom about the game because you know it, you love it. You're trying to educate fans more. I love it. The second you become a head coach, mm. that changes, right? There's pressure. And maybe some guys want that pressure. But, man, do you have a good right now? Like, it's Van Gundy. So good. Van Gundy had so many opportunities to go back to the league after – 
uh, losing the Houston Rockets job. He never went back to the league. Why? Because he had a cush TV job where he could just have his opinion. There's no accountability. In, in, well, I mean, there should be. But but here's the other thing, too. I think sometimes with some of these guys, because I know for me, even when I stopped playing, it was about being that gym still, though. It wasn't about just, like, putting on a suit and, like, talking about the game. It was about being in the gym, feeling the ball, being able to, like, like – create a better place for basketball players from what I had learned uh, from my experience in basketball. And that was at a low level, right? And so I can only imagine what some of these people, and sometimes it's egos, other times it's just personality, and sometimes it's just wanting to inspire the next generation of, of the game, you know? My prediction, I think J.J. Redick will be an NBA head coach. Whoa. I do. I think he's going to do it. And I think the timing with the expansion thing, it could just work out. J.J. just builds his reputation on the A-team of uh, ESPN's broadcast. He's one of the better guys to do it. He's super involved. All these NBA players sit down with him. All these young NBA players sit down with him and talk to him about the game on his podcast. He's building relationships there. As an announcer, one of the things you can do is you get to talk to the uh, coaches you talk to both head coaches, and sometimes you get extended chats with them. You talk about philosophy in the game, and then you kind of shape uh, your coaching philosophy, right? It's something Steve Kerr did a lot. Steve yeah. Kerr was an announcer That's for true. a long time. He did the GM thing with Phoenix, and he went back to announcing. He was able to shape kind of his vision, not only from his previous head coaches, but just from talking to people around the league. I think J.J. is going the same route. I don't know if he's going to be successful as a head coach. I think he's going to be one for sure. So... On that theory, I'm going thumbs up. I think I would not be sh shocked. All of a sudden, LeBron owns a Las Vegas team and J.J. Redick is the head coach. Fun theory, but I'm going thumbs down because I really enjoy the analysis and some of the breakdowns yeah. and this new podcast. Uh, great X-Men in the chat says, damn, this is a long stream. You know what? We're cooking tonight. Oh. We're cooking. We're winding down a little bit, too, but we had to hit some other NBA topics for sure. Saturday night, we're kicking it. A last one on a uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, NBA. Yeah. Thumbs up, thumbs down. There you go. A thumbs up, thumbs down on Jokic's new tactic. He's been doing this a lot this year where uh, when there's a questionable call to give Michael Malone time to think about challenging yeah. it, he fakes, ties his shoes to delay while, the game. While the ref is trying to hand him the basketball, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? To, <laughs> to be the, the guy to pass it in. Thumbs, Thumbs up. up. That's basketball 100%. IQ to the max. It's that is understanding. Manipulation. I love, I love it. it. And that's exactly what you need to do. And that's why we talk about like what some of these star players do. And it can be annoying, sure. But at the same time, there's these other moments where you're like, you're just doing a good job of using your knowledge of the game in, smart. in in a different way in a different way if, I, if <laughs> tony brothers would not like it. he'd be like technical no he You're wouldn't out. no he You're wouldn't out. i would untie tony brother's shoe while i'm down there hey morgan you know something we haven't done in a while what the basketball name game before we get there i want to acknowledge a couple things mm. i noticed with our podcast tonight Super fun and serious talking about the Kings. It was fun from a basketball perspective, but I, playoff juice kind of overcame me when we were breaking down this game tonight, okay. which I loved. But uh, we've been talking behind the scenes about this. We're on losses sometimes. We get so down. It turns into us, I can't believe this, 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 and then it ends. And I just feel like, was this a fun listen? So the thing I want to try, the goal with this podcast, win or lose, we will have some sort of fun in it. It has to be fun. It's basketball. This is this is fun, even when the Kings lose. So I will be, I thought maybe the Kings would lose tonight, sure. But I'm like, I'm going to make sure to do some NBA topics because we love the league. We're going to play some games because I like games. I told Deuce that I have fun every time, win or lose. But there's podcasts that end. And let me tell you. Oh, God. Here we go. I'm just going to say, let me tell you. Yeah. That's it. Go ahead. I'm afraid. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> this guy. What? That wasn't. That wasn't good enough. Our oh Wizards my. podcast was not good enough. Oh it felt like my. therapy. It just. I'm just being honest. Wait, was our Wizards? What happened at the Toronto one? 
was the first. Oh, so I was in, I was in San Francisco with Chelsea and I had picked her up after we had done, did that podcast. And she was like, how was the podcast? And I was like, it was good. Like, I was like, I already got a phone call from dudes being like, (laughs) what you got enough? And she's like, oh, what, is everything okay? Was it not? And I was like, no, he just wants like perfection 24 seven. Like he always just wants to be great. And it's like, I felt like we were really good. We were really good. And like, then he just has to go back and listen to it sometimes and be like, oh yeah, no, like we, we touched on everything. I had fun. I think it was a good listen for people. Like he literally, you guys, we do this podcast after every single game and he critiques every single podcast and she goes and this is coming from a three-time WNBA champ just one double or just one back-to-back championships and she's like oh but that's good like and then I just flipped her off and said get out of my car Chelsea you're damn right but like you still got like you got to trust me too whenever I do say like okay I have fun that's fine yeah there's levels to this let's start the basketball name game yeah. <laughs> okay, I know. There's something missing. Hey, welcome to the basketball name game. Morgan, I find an NBA player on basketball reference. They all have nicknames, right? Well, some of them do. I'm going to give you three nicknames. One of them is fake. Our contestant tonight is television star, basketball analyst, all around good gal. Her name is Morgan Reagan. Welcome, Morgan, to the show. Thank How are you doing? How are you so doing? Good. Thank you. Uh, Morgan, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, hi, my name is Morgan Reagan. I am addicted to basketball. <laughs> is it healthy? I don't know. Don't care. Love the game, bitch. Well, are you excited to play the basketball name game? Yay! Yay. Well, it's really fun because the fans can play too in the chat. Maybe you'll ask for their help. <laughs> All right, Morgan, are you ready? Here's two names tonight. Are you ready for your first one? Yeah, go. All right, this first one, Morgan Reagan. Shout out to this player. Nemanja Bialica today announced his retirement after playing 20 years of professional basketball. He played parts of three seasons with the Sacramento Kings. He won a championship with the Golden State Warriors in 2022. He was a EuroLeague MVP. Here are his nicknames, or are they? (laughs) We'll find out, Morgan. All right, here are the nicknames. Belly, the Serbian Stallion, and Professor Big Shots. Okay, couple things. Yeah? One, just to talk about myself, hate losing. Two, hate getting these wrong, especially with someone that has been with the Sacramento Kings, and I should know the answers, but I don't. But I do know that Belly was a nickname. Okay. Okay. Do you do you want help from the people in the chat at all? I always want help. Stop. Stop. Okay. Stop. Hey, hey, we can, uh, one person at a time. One per- Okay. 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 We're gonna quiet down. Why is it a whole bunch of women yelling at me? <laughs> it wasn't. It was a crowd of people. <laughs> <laughs> the nicknames: Belly, the Serbian Stallion, and Professor Big Shots. One of those is fake. So, someone Go with put gut. the Serbian sniper, but that wasn't one of them. So yeah. now I'm thinking, was it supposed to be that? What was the last one again? Professor Big Shots. Um, let's just go, Professor Big Shot. That's the fake one. Is that your final answer? Fi- final answer. Oh, oh I'm so sorry, f- Morgan. That was actually a nickname they called him in Europe. Of course, he was nicknamed Belly. The fake one was the Serbian Stallion. I should have listened. (laughs) Okay. All right, the next one is someone that will be coming to Sacramento on Monday. One of Morgan's very favorites, Kelly Oubre. Old favorite, but yes. All right, Kelly Oubre. His nicknames, one of them, fake, Mr. Perfect, Wave, and Tsunami Poppy. Do you need help? help? I always need help. I wish they were yelling the right answer, but they're just yelling. Um, Let's see. 
can't tell. Is it Tsunami Poppy? Is it Wave or Mr. Perfect? It would be nice for you to get this one. You missed the last one. Yeah, No, it would be nice to get all yeah. of them, Deuce. I'm going to go with Wave because I have no idea. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. What's the first one? Mr. Perfect, Wave, and Tsunami Poppy. Mr. Perfect. Is Mr. Perfect the fake, fake one? one? His perfect eyes, right? His Mr. Perfect, perfect just there? do it. Mr. Perfect, is that the fake one? Yes! Congratulations! Why would you even try and like convince me to go in a different direction? Uh, Wave that? was definitely one of them. He explained it on NBA Today back in the day, saying it was the wave is simply about his energy, energy he put out in the world, the the wave of energy, and then the eyes. wave turned into tsunami, the tsunami poppy. Some people on NBA Reddit said he's tsunami poppy for a different reason. What's the uh, different reason? Um, I'd probably have to turn down the mic to say it. <sighs> Ew. <laughs> so gross. Look it up yourself, kids. Gross. Don't look it up, kids. Well, Morgan, you go one for one. I thought you'd say Mr. Perfect. Here's my thing about Ubre. Great looking man. We all acknowledge. Beautiful eyeballs. Deuce Mason eyeballs. And here's my... Do you think those are his natural eyes? Correct. Yes. Why you, they're real. Why would you even They're just so perfect. Mr. Perfect. <laughs> are they that nice? And Mr. Perfect has just If you see anyone with eyes that nice, you automatically contacts? Like I get that a lot, you know? No, you don't. I, I do sometimes. I've never heard a single person okay. say that about your eyeballs. Okay. Proceed. Um well, this one, there's no more names to guess, but you know, with this name, it's always fun to just talk about names in general. It's not always about nicknames. Uh, we want to talk about specifically a member of the Sixers, Ricky Council the Fourth. He was undrafted in 2023, Morgan. Okay. He was picked up by the Sixers. Ricky Council the Fourth. You're thinking, man, that's crazy. Four generations, right? Oh, yep, yep. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking of nicknames actually right away. Okay, but Ricky Council the Fourth, yeah. four generations. His dad's name was Ricky Cou Council. His oldest brother is Ricky Council the second. Okay. His next brother is Ricky Council the third, and he was the fourth. Ricky Council the fourth. So, <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Oh. Is that not insane? <laughs> yeah. Okay. They're all named Ricky Morgan. Imagine if all your siblings were named Morgan. Morgan one, Morgan you know, two, Morgan three, you know Morgan so four. Funny? I was just thinking because like. I like my grandpa, my dad, and my brother all have like Joseph in their yeah, name. Generation. And that's and that's why I was like, my brain was not going to like siblings. Okay, let's rewind. Hold on, hold on. So Ricky Council the fourth plays on the Sixers. His dad's name's Ricky. His oldest brother's Ricky. His so, second oldest brother's Ricky, too. He's four. So here's my question. Do they just get called by their numbers? So glad you were ask, oh. asking that question, Morgan. You're exactly right on that. I, this wasn't even a contest, but yes. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. He did say in an interview recently that they, growing up, they called him second, third, and fourth. Genius. Why would a you fourth. give your kids a name when you can give them a number? One? Where's one? <laughs> Four? Get your ass over here. Brush your teeth, three. Why am I yelling at my I, kids? I, I, I don't know. It's very, this is the type of. This is like Annie where I'm like the, the bad uh, lady just yelling at everybody. You don't have kids, only in a TV commercial. Two? Oh, no. man. <laughs> um, you know, Sorry. Okay, you know what's funny too? The whole time my brain was just going everywhere like, okay, it's going to be the councilman. It's going to be council. Oh, uh, like, see, yeah, yeah, the nickname game was already over. Yeah, No, it really messes with my brain. Um, people are sending me the clip of uh, Bull Bull from tonight. Okay. It's a play. Hoop Central put out. He was defending Victor Wembenyama, and he was upset with the call, and I think he was caught uh, telling the official that you are D-writing, bro. I get it. <laughs> like it was a bad call. That's that what. is funny. Go, go. Okay, that's what it was. Nothing too bad. Oh, man. All right, final thoughts from tonight, Morgan. This is a long one, huh? It's um, a fun one. Dude. Let's give it up to uh, the chat. Let's give it up to the chat. Oh, chat. Dude, you guys, hanging out on a Saturday night yeah, yeah, yeah. brings me so much joy. Because even I was like, oh, well, will I ever have time to like just like, I don't know, do something on Saturday night? 
this is my doing something. Yeah. And this is so fun. So thank you for making this so fun. And enough about them. Give it up to us. Yeah, how about what about us? us? Just crushing it on a Saturday night. <laughs> um, <laughs> we do need to give our shout outs to some super chat people uh, and some new members. Martin has been a member for 21 consecutive months. Shout you, out Martin. to Ryan, a member for 18 straight months saying, Walk up three from Fox with two minutes left had me worried. Yeah. LOL. Yeah, I hear we you. We know. A uh, shout out to Open Mike who donated five bucks saying for maybe two doggy treats. Ben's Bark It Place is cool. Thanks. I have not heard of that. I'll have to check it out. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Great idea. It. Donate Super Chat to get a plug in about a business. We're cool with it though. Yeah. Because it's all about the dogs. <laughs> the Kings had some dogs tonight. Uh. We'll get the doggy treats. Um... In the chat, someone said, I like the long ones. Talking about the podcast, I hope. Um, yeah, we and we have to be smart with the long podcast because, one, it's just a long season. We got back to back oh, yeah. a lot, so we have to be smart. You know, got to you got to manage, load manage. Well, you got to load manage, but you also, like, you don't want to force conversation yeah, yeah. that isn't there. And I feel like tonight, too, because we had a second to breathe, even though we really didn't, but we had a second to like, I don't know, catch our breath yeah. that it was like, Oh, we can actually look around the NBA, like watching some NBA last night too. It was just, it was really uh, nice. Catching I watched up on so stuff. much NBA last night. It was so fun. It was so fun. It's like, yeah. And there's just, it's just been jam packed. And Hey, tonight was the last, uh, Stockton Kings home regular season game, even though they will be playing a, at least one playoff game that we will be calling. But still it's like, even that it's like usually, Nights off, there's yep. just never a night off. So it's been nice to actually hang out with all of you. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us tonight. Adam says, only reason I let my eight-year-old stay up late on a Saturday night. Thanks for making me the cool dad. Ugh. Shout out to your kid. Sorry for any glad cuss I turned words. Down. I'm yeah. glad I turned down the mic when I told you the well, thing about Uber and tsunami puppy. Huh? I did say the B word. Oh. <laughs> I didn't flip off the camera now. I'm good. Uh, Hector says, real ones know when they used to be two plus hours long. <laughs> 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 well, Hector, we, we got some two hour ones coming for sure. Dude, we added on like you have to remember Deuce at that time. We only had one job. Yeah. We yeah. only had one job. I know. I know. And then when you add on three more, it's just like you got to be smart. You it's do have quality, to be smart. Quality, not quantity. For bro. sure. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for hanging out tonight. Fun Kings win. Appreciate you guys so much. We'll be back live again Monday night following Kings and Sixers. Always check out our YouTube channel for more content. YouTube.com slash at Deuce and Mo. Check out Patreon.com slash, excuse me, Patreon.com slash Deuce and Mo too. We love you guys, but we got to go. You all have an amazing Saturday night. Thanks for being here. See ya. Deuce and Mo. Deuce and Mo. Deuce and Mo. They tell you what they know. Deuce and Mo. Deuce and Mo. Deuce and Mo. The podcast that you know.